Sharon Hatch. I'm a member of Grace Community Baptist Church on Bright Side, pastor by uh, Titus A. White. Good morning. I'm Jerry Vaughn. I'm a member of the Two Light Baptist Church.
today's word. Almighty God, we thank you and we praise you for the day, oh God. Your people have come from their individual homes, oh God, coming to you for a reason, God. Dear Lord, they come into this place, dear God, broken, dear God, lost and trying to find their way, Almighty God, in the name of Jesus. Dear God, our children have gone from this place to that place seeking to fill a void, oh God. But today, dear God, you bring a reassurance to your people, oh God, that that void can be filled only in you and you alone, oh God. So as you have allowed them to come into this place, oh God, we give you thanks and praise, oh God. For they will hear what they need to hear, see what they need to see, God. For they will come to you wholeheartedly, God, holding nothing back. Dear God, we just thank you today, dear God, for the word that has been uh, blessed on the pastor's heart, oh God. Remove anything that is not like you in the name of Jesus, dear God. Remove all the mountains and the valleys, oh God. And allow this word to reach the hearts of your people, oh God. May this word not fall on deaf ears today, oh God. So open their eyes, open their ears, and open their hearts to receive this your word, oh God. We want you to have your way with this place, oh God, and allow the miracles, the, uh, the wonders, almighty God, to take place in this place, oh God. We magnify you, oh God, and we allow you to have your way, Father. It is in the name that above all names we pray. Amen. Bless his high name. I feel a little worship in the building. Second Sunday of July 2021. Welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church and Facebook Live audience. I know uh, I've been looking on Facebook. I know you said you couldn't hear me, uh, hear us, but now you can. Amen. I'm Pastor Frederick Sweetwine. Today we will be talking about where is your evidence? Yeah, you brought the accusations, but can you back it up? Can you prove it? Uh, the scripture was read in your hearing, and we're going to ask God's blessings. Lord, we thank you and praise you. Uh, God, we pray that you speak uh, through me, God, on today. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, there's a book uh, written by Robert uh, Withnot titled Christianity in the 21st Century. 
reflections on the challenges ahead. He reflects on religion at the end of the millennium by offering a sobering, realistic, and hopeful assessment of where the church was at the turn of the millennium and where the church is headed in the 21st century. The challenges facing the church are, are institutional, ethical, doctrinal, political, and cultural. They cut across different faith traditions, denominations, ethnic groups, um, and sectors of the population. His basic argument is that the challenges ahead can be met most effectively by understanding the underlining framework guiding the ways in which we think about those challenges. In our text on today, the Apostle Paul is faced with some challenges. Some problems with the Corinthian church concerning theology of the resurrection of the dead. Corinth was an important and wealthy city on the peninsula. It was a narrow strip of land separating northern and southern Greece. The Apostle Paul spent 18 months there on his second missionary journey, and he originated a church while he was there. I stopped by to let you know that there are going to be some problems in life. He said, well, Reverend, I'm saved now. I'm on my way to heaven. You may be saved and on your way to heaven, but every now and then, some problems are going to knock on your door. Can I get a witness? Every now and then, Satan is going to knock on your door. And when he does, I just want to ask him one question. Where's your evidence? Uh, you know, there's some things that I've done in my past. If the truth be told, I'm guilty. Uh, but according to Jesus the Christ, finished works on the cross, I'm forgiven. Oh, my God, I thought I was in the right place on today. Uh, when we confess our sins, the Bible says that he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So once I've repented, I'm set free. And so when the devil whispers in my ear, I, let, I ask him the question, where's your evidence? Satan can no longer put anything against our charge as believers because of the finished works of Jesus Christ. What I'm trying to get you to see is that we need to be a risen church. Oh, God, Jesus Christ is risen. If we have a risen Lord, we need a risen church. The problems that I see in church oftentimes is that we get stuck in the grave and not the grace stage. You see, there's only one letter difference between grace and grave. Uh, and that's if you change the C and the V. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, there, there's only one that we have to be concerned about, and that's changing the V and the C. Uh, you're either going to live in complimentary grace of our Lord and Savior, or you're going to live in the valley of death. Uh, if you can just change one thing, you are just a, with a minor adjustment in the grave that we've been thinking in, the grave that we've been worrying in, the grave that we've been upset in. If we can just change one letter and step into grace. Jesus said, my grace is sufficient. Grace is the risen church. I'm trying to tell you that the same fullness is ready to pay all expenses to get you out of whatever you locked up in. So when Jesus went to the cross, he went for me. He went for you. He went as you and I. So he went into the grave as me. And he got up as me. Oh, my God. Paul makes the connection in Ephesians 2, and he says, And you have he quickened, you have he made alive who were dead 
and trespasses and sin. Jesus got up as a shadow of all of us. If he didn't get up, we couldn't get up. When he got up, I got up. I just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Oh, I can't hear your neighbor. When he got up, I got up. Oh, that should make you feel some kind of way right there. When he got up, I got up. Now, the Bible declares that he's seated on the right hand of God. And so if he's seated on the right hand of God, even though we are here in the earth, we're still seated where? In heavenly places. When he died, I died. That's why death has no more power over me. Because when I accepted him as my Lord and Savior, I had to tell sin the bill that already been paid. I don't owe you anything. Jesus took care of my debt. Isn't it amazing? You can walk up in a place and say, look, the bill's been paid. Eat all you want to eat. Shop and get all that you want. And just walk out and say, the bill have already been paid. Because Jesus paid it all. The Bible declares that in our scriptural text on today, what is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishability. It is sown in dishonor, but it's raised in glory. You see, that's why we can't let other people keep bringing up our past. That was then, this is now. Can I get a witness? That was then. I can't help yesterday, but I can deal with today. I've tried to, to overcompensate for what I've done in the past, and God said, oh, no, no condemnation. You don't live on that street anymore. And because you've moved, you have a new address. I'm seated in heavenly places. Can I go a little deeper? I normally read this text at funerals. Verse 51 says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will be able to be changed in a moment and in a twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. Triumph. For the trumpet will sound. And the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we will be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Then what is written will happen. Death is swallowed up in victory. I like this. He says, behold, I tell you a mystery. We, not, we need to be very careful with this word mystery because the way that we use it today is not the way that Paul wrote it. Paul meant this mystery is not something that can't be known. It's quite the opposite. Paul says this mystery is the knowledge of God and those that receive me will receive this knowledge. If we are in God, there's nothing nobody can do about it. We're in him. On this first Sunday back into the church, full time, we are in Christ. So let's stop complaining and let's stop bickering about where we are. We are in him. In the building, out the building. We're still where? In him. You see, because we are in him, we have no reason to not live for him. Oh, God. You see, because we are in him, I live. Because I'm in him, I move. Because I'm in him, I have abilities to do things beyond myself. Because I'm in him. You see, isn't it, wouldn't it be great if we can have a, a service whereby every need is met. I'm talking about every one of them. All healing, amen. All financial debt. Everything, let me stop, let me stop here. Everything that we need is in the building. Only thing we're required to do is do our part. We shouldn't be in a position where people have to do beyond their part. If you do your part, God will do the rest. 
Oh, God. If you have a spiritual gift, use your gift. Stop sitting on your gift. Because the devil wants you to cover it up. But God wants us to use it. You see, 1 Corinthians 15, 55 says, Death, where's your victory? Where's your evidence? Death is going to sting. You see, in the Old Testament, they talked about Sheol and Hades. Oh, death, where is your victory? Your sting. In the Jewish thought, Hades or Sheol is the abode of the dead, a place of torment where one will feel abandoned by God, according to Acts 2.27. It is associated with death, but Jesus holds the keys to death, hell, and the grave. God gives us the victory. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gave us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my, my beloved brethren, he says, be steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in the Lord's work, because you know that your labor is not in vain. I've lived long enough to understand that when you do good, sometimes evil will still knock on your door. I've lived long enough to understand that the more we try to do good, it's, it's a process because the devil will knock on your door even the more. As long as you're doing, running with the course of the world, the world is offering you cookies and tea and hot coffee. But when you start running for Christ, the world will shut you off. I've lived long enough to see that you can outlive some stuff and God will turn it around. And God will work on your behalf. How many of us know that God is working on our behalf behind the scene? Oh God, oh God, oh God, God is working on our behalf behind the scenes. According to Romans 8, 28, he says, all things work together for the good of them that love God and that are called according to his purpose. So you say, well, this bad thing is happening. It's working for your good. I didn't get what I wanted. It's working for your good. It, it, it looks a little bleak right now. It's working for your good. You see, don't give the devil power and authority to tell you any difference because the devil don't have any evidence. I stopped by to let you know that the presence of God is your new evidence. God is moving by his spirit. It says, therefore, my beloved brother, be steadfast. Paul concludes this chapter with an exhortation. He lets us know that purposeful work is the blessing. Today we will baptize two precious beings that lives will be changed forevermore. Today we want to understand what Jesus did on the cross and in the grave when he rose has first of all been acted out in the water when he was baptized by John the Baptist. John baptized him in the water to give us a preview of what he would do on the cross. John didn't even want to baptize Jesus, but Jesus told him, suffer it to be so to fulfill all righteousness. And the Bible says that John baptized Jesus. And he, went and he took him down in the water we hear no words, but when he came up out of the water, my God, came up out of the water, up out of the water. It's like coming up out of the grave. When he came up out of the grave, a voice spoke from heaven and said, 
This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. When you make a life-changing decision, God says, you're my child, and I'm well pleased with your decision. The Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove, and here for the first time since Genesis, we see the fullness of the Godhead dwelling in him boldly. Even as he rose up from the dead with all power in his hand, that word power is egusia, which means all authority. He got up with all power in his hand, church. He had some keys. And he says, if I go down and I come up, I'm going to have all power in my hand. Therefore, the devil can't do anything against you without my divine permission. How many of us know that whatever we go through, it has to go through God first. You say, God, I, I remember reading in the book of Job, and um, I, the Bible lets me know that God trusted Job. I prayed for years. I said, Lord, don't trust me that much. I said, Lord, I don't want to go through the throughness of life like that. But how many of us know that we can't dictate what will happen, but we can dictate how we deal with what, what happens? Uh, I remember talking to uh, uh, Carl Jackson, and he said, uh, Reverend, I'm going through the throughness, but just let God be God. And when we can let God be God, then we don't have to put the weight on our shoulders. We can give it to someone that can handle it. He, he rose both the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He rose from the dead. I heard him say, no man takes my life. I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I'll pick it up again. Then Paul says, he was raised by the same spirit that quickened Jesus' body. So Paul says, it was the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, it was in him. And then later he says, he was raised by the glory of the Father. He was raised by the glory of the Son. He was raised by the glory of the Holy Spirit. I have evidence now. This is your beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. The Holy Spirit began to descend like a dove. The fullness of the Godhead. Everything in heaven spared no expense for his resurrection. Paul says, oh, that I may know him. I uh, may know him in the fullness and the power of his resurrection. Your evidence is to finish and finish strong. God's given you the grace to finish. Finish your commitment. Finish your relationship. Finish what God has promised you. Finish, come hell or high water. I, I decree and declare, just finish. I know it hurts, but finish. I know they broke your, your, your feel. They hurt your feelings, but still finish. You may be standing with tears in your eyes, but you still have to finish. Finish, finish, and finish strong. I promise you, for better, for worse, in sickness, in health, for richer or poor. I'm going to finish, even when my emotions are crazy, when my mind is confused, I'm going to stand. If you don't get this certain fact, you'll be frustrated by what you see because your vision is further than your days. How many of us know you may not finish everything that you see? Your children may have to finish it for you. Oh, God. But you're meant to start it. You're meant to run this course. But sooner or later, you have to pass the baton to the next runner. Even though you can see his or her course, you're not meant to run it. I stop by to tell you, stop trying to live your life through your children. Oh, God. You know, it's okay to raise them and teach them. 
but then conclude their destination by what you think. And don't let your vision make them feel like a failure because you're not responsible for everything that you can see, but you're only responsible to run your course. That's the evidence. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We offer Christ. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, you say, well, I've never really got it right with Jesus. Today is your day. The doors of the church are not open. You may be here today. You may be listening by way of social media. Today is your day. Lord, I desire to get closer to you. Lord, I confess my sins right now. You said if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, come, come on. Because we're still in a pandemic, if you want to receive Christ on today, just lift your hands. Secondly, if you're here today and you say, well, I'm saved and I'm on my way to heaven, but I need to, I need to get better. I need to commit more to God. If that's you on today, we're going to pray for you right where you are. Just lift your hands. Thirdly, if you don't have a church home and you say, well, I want to be nurtured over here at Wesley, the Lord will give you an opportunity to come and grow and use your gifts and talents over here. If you want to be a candidate to join the church, just lift your hands right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we touch and agree, believing God can do anything but fail. In the mighty name of Jesus. We offer Christ to you, oh my brother. For Christ to you. Oh, my sister. He'll give you brand new life. Hallelujah. New life. Oh, come, oh, come. Just as you are. Send a man, send a woman, send a boy, send a girl. Put those hands together and give God praise. Where is your evidence? Amen. We're going to ask um, that the Russell family come forth now. Prepare for baptism. that's with them, you can come at this time. Take me to the wall. If you're part of the family, godparents, you can come forth at this time. Family. Take me to the road. 
I know I've been converted. I know I've been converted. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we initiated into Christ's holy church. We incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. I present to you, church, Braylon and Davy Russell. I ask you now, on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? She said, yes, yes, all right. You gonna do good? All right. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil and justice and oppression in whatsoever forms they present themselves. Yes. You can tell the church. Yes. All right. All right, give me a little volume on my mic. I, I think we need to hear this, baby. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to the people of all age, ages, nations, and races. Yes. All right. Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example they be guided to accept God's grace for themselves? I'm talking to your parents. Yeah, to to uh, profess their faith openly and lead a Christian life. Okay. Do you, and this is to the congregation, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the body of the The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. 
their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism and his death and resurre resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit and bless the gift of water and those who receive it to wash away their sins and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives that dying and being raised with Christ they may share in his final victory. comes against you, be reminded that God, Holy Spirit, leads, guides, and directs. I've got you a little card. You can um, read about it and use it, and use it for your household in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I have four. Now, who are these four going to? disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now it is our joy to welcome our sisters in Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Congregation, through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus 
with joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ, members of the household of God. I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, perfect them in love. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Family, this is um, the certificate of baptism. Be it known that Davy Russell and Braley Russell are the children of Dennis and Sabrina Russell, um, have having been presented for this holy baptism. And Kendra Ennis, Taylor, Michael Williams, and Shadrika having renounced the spiritual wickedness having rejected the evil power of this world and repented of their sin, having accepted the freedom and power given by God to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves, having confessed Jesus Christ as their Savior, having put their trust in his grace, and having promised to serve him as their Lord in union with the church with Christ, has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races having agreed to nurture them in Christ's holy church and by teaching an example, guiding them to accept God's grace for themselves and to profess their faith openly and to lead a Christian life. This day they were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and is now enrolled as a baptized member in Wesley United Methodist Church. Amen. 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 Come on, put those hands together and give God praise. I know y'all been ready, ready to sit down for a while now. Yeah, like y'all feet hurt. Okay. Amen. Wear flats. Amen. 
Isn't it good you can come to church and laugh sometime? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now, church, let me tell you, in baptism with young, younger children, it is the church's and community responsibility to help lead them into a godly life. Uh, oh, as uh, church say amen. Uh, they're too young to make all of the right decisions, but it's up to us to help God and nurture them. So godparents and fathers, nurture them in the light of God. Don't take this for granted that they're going to get it right. Therefore, you must live a godly life before them. What do you mean by that? I'm saying you, you don't always just teach them how to drop it like it's hot. You, you teach them how to live for God. And teach them that I need thee every hour. I need thee. Can I get a witness in the building? Y'all all right? All right. Church, say amen. Come on, put those hands together and give God praise. Amen. Amen. At this time, we want to ask God's blessings upon this service, but also there are people that have uh, requested prayer. Amen. We want to continue to lift up the Tracy uh, White family on the passing of her father, uh, John uh, Jojo Joseph White Jr. Amen. The family of Roberto uh, on the passing of Domingo Moreno. Amen. And we want to continue to remember the family of Michelle Jordan Cummins. Uh, if you haven't received the email, one was sent out to let you know when the services will be uh, this week. Continue to pray for the Bernita uh, Pelachez family. And we're just asking God to um, continue to bless the Bolden family. Amen. And the Samuel Hughes family on the passing of S.L. Hughes. We thank God for his many bountiful blessings. We are back every Sunday now. I'll see you guys next week. Um, and every Sunday thereafter, see you in Bible study, 6 p.m. Central Time via Facebook Live. Amen. Shall we stand and go down from this place? Any other announcements from the church, Reverend? You all right? If you're on Facebook, let the church say amen. The whole church. God has spoken. Let the church. Receive you the benediction. Almighty God, you have allowed your children to receive this, your word today, oh God. 
allow them as they go, dear God, to remember to replace the great place, Almighty God, in the name of Jesus. Let us not be stuck anymore, oh God, for we are raised up by your grace, oh God. Let them go remembering that your grace is sufficient, oh God. Allow their words in everyday life to speak this word this day. It is in the name that and above all names we pray. Amen. Let the truth. 